Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Sports Weekly, your one-stop shop for all things sports. My name is Emmanuel Odufeja, your regular anchor alongside uh, my big boss here in the studio, Mr. Joachim Idada. Glad to always have you here. We weren't here last week, but um, always a great privilege to be um, in your faces um, talking sports um, from all across the world of, um, you know, um, sports, uh, but more emphasis on um, Africa because this is Asin TV, Africa Sports Entertainment and News Network Television. Um, it's always a pleasure to do this. Please join the conversation from wherever you're watching this. Um, like us on um, Facebook and um, follow us on Twitter and Instagram everywhere. Um, you'll find our social media handles flying across your screen. Let's get your um, take on everything that we discuss here. All right, it's been um, an eventful um, couple of days and maybe week um, in the world of sports. And so we'll just talk around um, all of the major talking points. Let's start from the world of um, um, tennis, where for the first time ever, maybe um, Kevin Anderson becoming the first South African and maybe also African to reach um, the US Open final. And um, of course, he was defeated in that final by Rafael Nadal, 6-3, 6-3, 6-4. He defeated um, Kevin Anderson in that final. But um, I think Kevin Anderson gave a good account of himself and um, however, the um, result um, may seem, um, Kevin Anderson has done himself and Africa, by extension, a lot of good. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Uh, there was a picture they showed Anderson and Rafael Nadal. I think they were in their early teens. Or just yeah, early yeah, early yeah. Teens. And they saw the two of them together. It took so long for hmm. the Africa to get to this Exactly. Yeah, this level of, exactly. Of, of success. Exactly. In tennis, but Rafael Nadal is getting close to a decade, if not yeah. about a decade, yeah. has been dominant in tennis. He tells us in Africa that we need, there's so much we need to do. And I know Kevin Anderson actually uh, did not have to recite permanently in South Africa for him to make progress in his tennis. He really mm. needed to leave South Africa. And I think he went to Germany, and from there, I, I don't know where he got. Now he's in the U.S., that is a longer shot away, and he played in the U.S. Open. And it's a pointer to every other African nation that there's no sport we in Africa can yeah. excel in if we, take we put, our hearts, to it. put our hearts to mm. it. And that is a clear example. Kevin Anderson has done Africa proud, and we here on Asset TV, I think we are proud of him. It's not there for others to fool. Well, congratulations um, to Kevin Anderson and um, South Africa also, you know, producing such um, a great player. Moving on from um, tennis, let's talk about basketball, you know, and um, that's even more interesting because uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the ladies, Nigeria's D Tigress, you know, actually clinched the uh, AfroBasket um, women title. You know, so at that point, you know, Nigeria was um, holding the men's title and also the women's title. But um, in the last one week, the men were also in action. And uh, well, maybe not as maybe not as ruthless, you know, as the ladies, because I think they lost one of their matches, you know. But they still were able to get into the finals where they were defeated by um, Tunisia. So I think um, the news flash right now is that Tunisia has dethroned Nigeria's D Tigers as. Africa's uh, basketball champion, 77 to 65, um, lost to Tunisia. What, what do you think about that? Um, I don't know whether we should rejoice. I don't know whether we should be sad. And one person I don't agree mm. when people have argued, oh, we're making so much noise about the success of the Tigers. Yeah. Now the Tigers have gone there. What? They yes, couldn't I, defend their couldn't title, defend yeah. Their title. But they gave a good well, account of themselves. They gave a good account yeah. of themselves. But the point I keep on saying is that, look, the Tunisian team, even mm. though they play home, mm. they're predominantly Tunisian players, local Tunisian players. But in the Nigerian <laughs> team, <laughs> whether we like it or not, let Here us we go up, again. Let us hold <laughs> up to the fact that these men mm -hmm. of Boys, or these men that represent Nigeria. They're boys, they're boys. They might look so tall, but they're boys. Actually, mm. traded their skill. they trade their skills in the United States. So in the like United Kevin Anderson for tennis. He, he, he went there 
Yeah. To get observed in tennis. Yeah, same Africa. thing for these boys. No, they didn't. They went there to come to Africa. He is going. You know, in US I, I, Open, I don't get. U.S. Open is in the U.S. I don't get. The only the only thing here is that a South African a South African is based in U.S. but he's still a South African. Let's take it this way. Yeah. The point I'm saying is the South African structure produced and is how. They, they, is he based in South Africa currently? Was, no. No, no. That is quite. It's just like in golf. There are a lot of tennis players in South Africa who are trading their skills. And he's Kevin Anderson there. based in South he's Africa right now. He has he been based in South Africa in the last five years? Yeah. Has he been based in South Africa in the last five years? Yeah. That's also a no. No, 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 no. But right now in South Africa, yeah. we have the production right to produce a thousand Kevin Anderson. I don't know. Yes, we have. Oh, yeah, yeah may no, maybe. No, no. Yeah, maybe. We so, so now, but you see, in Nigeria, we don't have the production line no, for basketballers. No, 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 you don't have. What we're just doing is just we're just going to America. <laughs> we go around the globe. Any Nigeria, any Nigeria, any person in Nigeria, like Nigeria you forget what you are Nigerian Nigeria. Once you are able to say, I, okay, I want to play for Nigeria, they're ready to coach you. Yes, they're ready to coach you. But you do, wait, what I'm saying, yes, it's good. It's good we have Afro basket. It's yeah. good we have the Tigers. Yes, it's good. Nobody's arguing about that. But the point remains is do we have the structure in Nigeria that will give us an, that advantage? That advantage. That and, that, and the answer to that question is yes, we have the structure in Nigeria, even if that structure means that our boys have to play in the US for them to have all of the exposure we and all of it. Yeah, so... When you were born? Yeah. Okay. Also, if I move to the US, give birth to my child there, then I'm going to force my child to come back to Nigeria just so he's, he's a bona fide Nigerian. I mean, he's still a Nigerian wherever he is. Um, one of the MVP of that tournament was Ehiogu. What does that sound like? Does that sound like... Does this does it sound like Rafael no, Nadal? Does it sound I, I, like Ellen last, Thompson? Last I know that he is everything under the mark condition. <laughs> if you know that today, it should, should describe that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And uh, but b basically, I think that uh, we'll still give it to um, Nigeria's um, D Tigers. They didn't clinch the title. They weren't able to defend, you know, their Afro Basket um, Championship, but. Uh, they gave a good account of themselves. And congratulations also uh, must be said to um, Tunisia. You know, they are now the current um, African basketball champions. While um, Senegal also defeated uh, Morocco 73-62 um, for the third place um, match. All right, let's talk about um, football very quickly. The beautiful round leather game. Um, it's been an eventful uh, month, I must say, uh, especially starting on the home front in Nigeria where um, Plateau United uh, have been crowned um, MPFL champions for the 2016-2017 season. Haven't defeated Rangers International and um, funny enough, uh, Rangers International were the um, just um, past um, winners of um, the MPFL. So Plato United defeated Rangers International 2-0 um, to take away that trophy. Um, our dear own um, MFMFC, who were hoping could have given a good, um, given Plato United a good run for their money, um, lost in the match that they had to win. Um, so Plato um, MFM lost to El Kanemi Warriors, I think 2-1, lost their way to El Kanemi Warriors 2 1, so um, it didn't matter whatever they did. But I think my, my major question here is um, how do you think Plato United, um, how did they do this? How, against uh, all horse? Last season they were, they were practically struggling. Exactly, I know you're not going to do a critical analysis of the league. I don't agree. We Not the league, not the league. It's Plato United's winning the league. Yeah. And the excitement, the excitement came from the fact that what we all knew for sure was that each team was going to win <laughs> all their home matches. <laughs> you understand? Then your away matches, you yeah. lose all of them. Well, <laughs> after two United, 
won was that we were lucky to win in a couple of oh, away matches. Okay. But they won all their decisions. Okay. And that was the same thing. Yeah, when I, 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 I think man, that's I think that's true to an match, extent because MFM lost yes. a bit of their away matches. Away matches yeah. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. when it now got to the match between El Kanemi and MFM, yeah. like you said, it was it was like every, like everybody expected it, that MFM was going to lose it. Exactly. Not because of any other thing, it's because two to tie is an away match. So okay. they lose their way match. Okay. But the point we should now ask ourselves that Platinum United, yeah. MFM, and uh, is it a Yimba, those teams mm -hmm. that are going to the continental mm -hmm. uh, uh, platform? Yeah. How will they survive the continental? How will Platinum United yeah. survive CAF? The CAF Championship. Mm. Like, uh, is it CAF Championship? Uh, yeah, how will CAF Championship. Survive? So, uh, so the same way they survived so, the MPFL. Uh, yeah, there's no, yeah. Playing there's no, good football. No, 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 it's not a matter of they didn't play that kind of good football that I will beat my chest and I say, I know I can defend these people <laughs> wherever they go. No. Well. <laughs> MFM. For MFM, yeah. the, danger, the danger for MFM is an average Lagos negotiator. Mm. Does he see MFM as a Lagos team? Well, MFM are a new team, so, so a yeah. New team. yeah. So now, for me, to go and play in the Continental, this, it's very expensive. It's very, very, very expensive. Now, I don't know how they will swing it. How the how the church, mm. you understand? How the church will be able to mobilize the kind of resources that will help them trade effectively trade their targets. For me, I think MFM will do well. We even do well at the continental level because, let me use the word, they are managed privately, a private company, online uh, team, online Platinum United as a state team. So what I see, I see mm. that uh, people like Godwin Nakena, uh, Pastor Lukoya, quite, they bring in some very, 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 very technically sound and uh, so, so a good team to put together, articulate, a, I'll call it a program, a real package that they can sell to possible investors to come into the club. Because if they don't raise the finance to go and play at it, Platinum United will go to the state government and the state government will give them money. MFO has no state government to go to. They can't go to the Lagos state government. They can't go to the Lagos state government. So it, it, it's not going to be easy. But I, the good thing about it is that if MFO can keep the ship steady and they can really effectively plan their strategy. You see, at the end of the day, mm. it's a victory for Nigerian football. Mm. Because for once, MFN will now be doing, not any but these are our state teams. Teams that can run to their state government and the state government to use football to play those politics. But for now, for now we're going to see uh, MFN help lead the way for the rebirth of Nigerian football. All right, so um, Plato United ended the season with 66 points. Um, that's how they took the league. MFM ended on 62 points. Um, Aimba International ended on 61 points, and Aqua United ended on 60 points. Um, so those are the four teams that would be going um, on the continent to represent um, Nigeria. Um, in relegations, you have um, Remo Stars on 29 points, Gombe United on 43 and ABS on um, 49 points. Uh, all right. So I think basically for me, I would give a lot of kudos to Kennedy Boboye, the um, coach of um, Plateau United. I think he did a very um, impressive job, you know, at the helms of affairs in Plateau United. Um, if you consider the fact that um, Kennedy Boboy has been with Abia Warriors and also Sunshine Stars, you know, so he's somebody that you would say understands um, Nigerian football. And I think um, if there's anything that he brought to um, Plateau United was was discipline. I know um, throughout the season there were a number of times when 
Um, I remember Dele Ajiboye was um, benched at some point. He had some, I think he came late, you know, from a, what was it called? He represented Nigeria with the Super Eagles and then came back late. And he was benched for weeks. Um, who were the other? I think about three players like that also had different, one was, um, he was trying to secure a move out of the club and then just lost concentration and Kennedy Boboye threw him out of the team. I, I think it was, those kind of, um, you know, hard, high-handedness, you know, that I think it brought into the team that enabled them to be, you know, solid. You wouldn't have, the um, Plato United does not have the luxury of, you know, a player like, say, Antonio Poto of Lobby Stars who ended up the season as the highest goal scorer. They didn't have the um, Umform Udors of Aimba. They didn't have the... Was this guy in MFM, um, the young boy Stephen O? They didn't have so they, they were they were a team. They, they they didn't have the stars. They were a proper team, and I think that kudos go, should go to um, Kennedy mm -hmm. Boboye. Good pass to fire. <laughs> yeah. So I I'm still I'm still shocked. I'm I'm surprised at. at Tatisha should give us a clear, I, this is not football. Tatisha mm. should have to come out to give us a clear understanding as to what happened in our league. Well, the success we have recorded in the league, yeah. it will be put to test on the continental level. Okay. I want to see if it produces the spark that we expect. They will so, not beat my chest. Keep your fingers crossed. 2017-2018 um, season will be coming up very soon. But talking about um, continental football, um, there's also the uh, Waffle Cup going on. Um, so Nigeria Super Eagles Team B, you know, coached by um, Sali Su, um, Yusuf, um, defeated um, Ghana 2-0 to reach the semi-final of the West African Football Union Cup of Nations. Um, Antonio Poto of Lobby Stars and Peter Energy Moses, you know, scored, um, you know, the two goals in that match. I think to a certain extent, this answers your question. Um, CAF Champions League would be nothing different from um, the Waffle Cup. It's the same home base guys that are going to be in this competition. And here is Nigeria getting to the semi final. Uh, so, yes. yeah, does this answer a bit of your question? Yes, these are things you know. In the old days, yeah. we would have the Waffle Cup. You see, the successes of the clubs like Bender Insurance. Stationary you know, stores. Uh, stationary stores, Flash Amigos, Wanya Wanya National, um, these are Calabar Rovers, those great clubs, Abiola Babes, uh, Concord, uh, is it the Concord FC, all of them. Uh, the successes was, of those clubs was built on the fact that you had these small regional tournaments that were that held, and it also could, we could trace that to the success of the Super Eagles at that time. Then they were, uh, yes, they, they, they were, we were calling them the Green Eagles. So the, the, the Waffle Cup, it, it was off the circuit for so long. It's good it's bad. Uh, it will help the growth of Nigerian football. Mm. Especially when right now we have somehow restricted it to what? To uh, what we call the Team B. But if we use, if I want to use the example of what happens in Europe and other, of other continents, what the success of the British football, even the American football, is because the clubs have age graded football. We are having Team B in at the senior level. Yeah. We have Team A, we have Team B. But when you go to the club level, is it replicated? No. Do we have age graded football at the club level? That means a club has a senior first team. They do not have age graded football. In the match match between uh, Liverpool and um, who did they play the last? Burnley. And Bob, yes, Burnley. The last match they showed a man from Liverpool, a young man. I can't remember his name too well. They said he started, he entered Liverpool at the age of nine at the cadet level. Now I ask you, is there any club in Nigeria that has cadet level? No. You do, so this that's why I say we have what our classical call. Our classical court, uh, we have um, a dysfunction. We, there, there are certain critical pieces that is missing in the puzzle, because we cannot be saying that the super eagles have great uh, team A, local team B, 
or somehow a certain form of gravy, and you don't have it at the club at level. The club level. And the so that's, that's top, very important to top. bring in the new. So I think that that's a, that's a quality point there. It's very important to bring in the new boys. You know, that's how you'll continue to develop um, um, young talent. But I also know that the Wafu Cup is also a kind of a preparation for the Chan that's and the so proper, uh, the proper so Chan if tournament. Right now, yep. If right now all the clubs we have in Nigeria have a great good for world, you now find what you have is that from the club level, instead of even featuring your A team at the Wafu Cup, you are testing your under 21 because the club has under 21, the club has under 17, yeah. the club has under what under 15, the club has under 10, the club has under 9. The same thing. Yeah, fantastic. But right now, what you just see, we just bring people, some men who are old enough to be my grandfather, and we claim that sometimes it's a bit. That's sweet. not true. <laughs> All right, um, Nigeria's um, under 20 women also have also been in action. The Falconets, um, they defeated Tanzania 3 0 in uh, France 2018 um, under 20 World Cup qualifier. Um, so, fantastic one for them. Um, of course, the second leg will come up in um, Dar es Salaam on September. Yet, and the winner would face um, either Morocco or Senegal um, in November. So, congratulations to Nigeria's under 20 um, women team Falconets, and um, we hope them all of the best in the return leg uh, away um, in Tanzania. We shouldn't be surprised. They've been doing well, right? You know, look, I don't know. You see, you know, the hardest position to be in a race is to be the leader. If you are in a race, even in a horse race, you are always there in front, you are chasing, you don't know what you are chasing. Sometimes you have to take a start and look back and see the next person who is closest, who is closest to me. When it comes to female football, somehow, somehow, Nigeria is somehow far ahead of many other, Af other African countries. But what I'm witnessing is that many of these countries are catching up. They are closing up the gap, they are closing up the gap. Are we making progress? Are we on our own side? Are we making progress? Because at the end of the day, these people are going to play in what? In the World Cup. And that is why it's called the World Cup qualifier. So what I should have been expecting, like our under our under is it under 20 team? They should be playing friendly with tougher positions, such as even France under under 18 team and the rest. They should be playing friendly with people who are ahead of them. Mm. So that we'll be seeing a true test. Of what they can deliver because countries like all these African countries, if you don't even come to a good football at the female level, they have nothing to show. You understand? At the senior level, yes, there's some little competition from Cameroon or some South Africa or Ghana, but generally, when it comes to female football, Nigeria is far ahead of many of the countries. So, we should be focusing more on exposing our girls at the international level than some of these things that we are taking glory for. All right, so let's talk um, table tennis now. Um, this has been an effort, you know, to try to bring table tennis to the grassroots. We've always talked about how, especially in Nigeria, we have the likes. We still kind of depend on the likes of um, Shegun Toriola, Aruna Kodri, uh, what's the woman's name again? Funke Oshona, Ike, and the likes of them. Uh, but there's been this Cadet Kids Mini Championship that happened at the National Stadium, Surulere, Lagos. Uh, so, Joachim, you tell us about that. Uh, it's, it's good. It's, it's, uh, we are doing the right thing. Uh, I think part of the things we'll talk about it is that there is need for us to invest in youth sports. Mm. But my own take in some of these things is that it is not structured. If it's going to be structured, what we should have is at the school level, all over the nation, because the, of the mini cadet tournament was organized by uh, Coach um, Alakuru, that is the Nigerian national team. His name is not Coach Alakuru, he's known as Coach Alakuru, that is uh, uh, Sandu Belu. Yes, he was the one that organized it. It's good. Okay. But for a national coach to go and start organizing a cadet tournament, it shows that we, there's a drought. There's something happening at the, at, the, at the base, at the foundation. 
So you see people like Atonda Musa, uh, Naomi Bankoli, and the rest of them, uh, they go down to even those like Toriola and uh, Fuko Shunaiki, Arno Kwaji. This we just came, we just discovered it was not a structure that produced these athletes. So now you now have a coach Alakoro, who everybody knows, we all know him as coach Alakoro, trying to do his little bit to see how he can stimulate interest in table tennis. I remember when I was young, everywhere in Nigeria, I think even in today is the same. I don't know whether it's that popular. When I was very young, everywhere you go in Nigeria, you have a table tennis table. If you go to Saneko, even with those in Ikoi, they also have a table tennis table. Some people were playing betting on it and playing their, their game and enjoying themselves. Others were not betting, they just enjoying themselves. So we had all of that. What we need is, I, I think what is missing, many of the things we do is structure. Because what should have happened is that at the secondary school level, there should be coaches, um, table tennis coaches, almost in all the secondary schools, all the primary schools, most likely even in other schools in Nigeria. Then all of these people spot the talent. And when you support the talents, you send them to academies like Coach Alakuru's Academy. But sometimes, somehow, we didn't see that in Coach Alakuru's Academy. We just saw people from different states coming, individuals bringing their children and everything. So, good one for Coach Alakuru. It shows you love the sports. You produce people like Toriola, Toriola and the rest of them. It's good. But I think the ministry needs to do more. The federation needs to do more. We need structure in Nigerian sports. Well, talking about structure, I think I like that keyword. So basically, for the Cadets Kids Mini Championship, it took place last week at the National Stadium, Surulere, really Lagos, and congratulations to the coach and all of the young boys that are coming up the ranks. But talking about structure, let's end this um, today's uh, edition um, um, on the note of um, the Los Angeles. Um, Los Angeles um, officially gets um, 2018 Olympics um, 2028 Olympics, I beg your pardon, while um, Paris um, will host um, 2024 games. So basically, it means that there's already a structure in place that understands or that um, already decides which cities are going to be hosting, um, say, the next three Olympics. I think that that's massive. That's massive when we talk about structure. Yes, you, you, well, you, you can see the timeline that there is a gap. Hmm. I mean, we haven't, we haven't had 2020 Olympics yet. We're already talking about 2024 and 2028. So it gives the people, it gives the states. The cities, the states, yeah. Enough time to plan. To prepare. In place, the structure. But concerning the early Olympics, me, I'm fascinated about mm. it. It's one, it's a testament that if you invest rightly, you will be compensated, you will be recognized. Mm. Uh, LA over the years have been investing. Remember that Los Angeles is the home of Disney. What Disney? What Walt Disney? Okay. Los Angeles has invested so much in tourism. You have Universal Studio. You have the Discovery World. You have um, you have a chain of tourist uh, activities that has happened in the last 20 to 30 years in Los Angeles. Mm. So over the years, they've been building infrastructure. They've been building infrastructure. Now, this is the icing on the cake. Now you have infrastructure. What you need to do is to connect the lines. Connect. Remember that Los Angeles is part of, a, of California. It's just an area, in a state in California. Uh, it's not a state, a, a county. LA County is in California. Then you have and you have the northern region of California that is built around San Francisco. And surprisingly, you know, LA is not the capital of California. Sacramento okay. is the capital of California. So you can see the surprising thing that even though the Olympics is coming to California, it's they not didn't coming take it to, to the capital Sacramento, city. yeah. Not take it to, coming to Sacramento. Unlike here in Africa, unlike here in Nigeria, if all of a sudden we say, oh, we want to host a major event, everybody will shout Abuja because it's the capital city. Or Lagos. Or they will shout Lagos. Now, they might never shout Lagos because the funny, funny kind of politics we have today. So it, it, just, it, it just tells you that if you invest properly, not the world will recognize you. And LA, uh, California have been investing over the years in infrastructure. And California is the richest state in the United States of America. 
and now that be rewarded with hosting the Olympics. And for me, the hosting of 2028 is a clear business decision. Because you've built so much, you've put in place so much, somebody has to use it. And yeah. so bringing the Olympics there, men. It means, it's, makes it's, a lot of sense. It's, it's a, it's but let's, let's, let's also habit. let you know, yeah. you know, out there that uh, this is not the first time that Los Angeles is hosting the Olympics. They have hosted the Olympics in 1984 and also 1932. So bringing it back, you know, is just uh, yeah. is the icing on the it cake, like like you, like you said. If you hosted the Olympics once, hmm. and you are rooting to host it a second time, it shows that they benefited something. Definitely, in the this definitely. Right now, they are in investing. Definitely. In and once again, they become they, they rewarded. Definitely. So congratulations to Los Angeles and also to the beautiful city of, city of Paris. All right. Yeah, we look forward to be there, you know, covering that event live and direct. Los Angeles, here I come. <laughs> all right. So um, it's been entertaining um, talking about all of these um, sports um, stories. Yeah, football is uh, maybe, as far as MPFL is concerned, the Nigeria is on a break right now. The season has just ended. But, of course, there's still the ITO Cup, the Federations Cup going on. So still um, a number of things to catch up on. Um, I know that um, EPL is still strong and going. A um, number of African players are doing well. Uh, maybe not doing so well. Um, Sadio Mane got a red card, you know. Um, who else again? Mohamed Salah, all of them Liverpool people. All right, uh, where else again? I think a uh, number of footballing events still still going on. So we'll come your way again next week. Please have a jolly good weekend. Bye-bye now.